Well, hello everyone. This is Richard Kadish, owner and broker in charge of Go Gated Realty. And it's October 24th, 2021. We're here on the May River at the new Calhoun Street Dock. And we're actually here to attend the 17th Annual Historic Arts and Seafood Festival, which you're going to see is all along Calhoun Street with over 100 displaying artists from over 10 different states. But before we take a closer look at the festival, I thought you might like to see some of the sights down here at the May River. And here at the end of Calhoun Street, next to the dock, is the new town of Bluffton. Wright Family Park. And this park is new just within the last year and the beauty speaks for itself. And across from the Wright Family Park is the Church of the Cross right on the May River. One of the few buildings in Bluffton that was not burned to the ground by the Union in 1863, the uh, Union Army came across from Hilton Head Island where they were stationed as part of the Norris Anaconda plan to stranglehold the south, southern ports, and the Confederates had been raiding the island from Bluffton, so the Union got tired of it. They came over, came down to Brighton Beach and marched up that way, came right down to the dock here at May River and proceeded to burn most of Bluffton down. The reason that this church was spared is because they were concerned that the embers would drift over onto their boat and burn their boats. And the history of that expedition and much more about Bluffton and Hilton Head Island during the Civil War is told by Jeff Fulgham in his outstanding book called The Bluffton Expedition. I definitely recommend it. One of the best history books I've read by the former president of our historical society here in Bluffton and a real life soldier in Afghanistan, Jeff Fulgham, F-U-L-G-H-A-M. And the artist of this oyster shell is Laurie Parker and it's called The World is Your Oyster. But every festival has a poster. And the posters that go back as long as I remember are from artist Amari Ferris. And that's him there in the blue shirt. And this is Michael Josinski from Gainesville, Florida. And he does photography. And you say these are Florida scenes. A lot of Florida sunrises, uh, sunsets from Key West up to Pensacola. Uh, I like to specialize in the Florida beaches. You know though a lot of these scenes like this one behind you this could be a Hilton Head Island beach. Uh, it could be. Um, it's from Pensacola but I like to say it's any beach. Um, any beach. That's the nice thing about a lot of these beaches. They could be Florida, Lake Michigan, South Carolina, North Carolina. Come in a lot of sizes too. Yeah, I offer uh, at the shows uh, six feet down to uh, eight by 12 inches. Um, the bigger ones hang nicely over couches. The smaller ones uh, work nicely in bathrooms, offices. What kind of a camera do you use? Uh, Nikon D800. Okay. Well, I hope you had a good festival. That's been excellent, sir. Thank Thanks you. very much for talking. Thank you. Thank you. And this artist is from North Carolina. Hi, what do you call this kind of... This is wood turning. Wood turning. And you are the uh, artist, aren't you? I'm the artist, Nathan Favors. Nathan, how long does it take to make a bowl like some of these? On the average, one year. One year? Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Is this your first uh, festival? Oh, this is my first one here. Yes, it is. And this is Michelle Blank from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. 
who obviously does stained glass. So how long have you been doing stained glass? A little over 45 years. 45 years? It looks like you've pretty much perfected things. I have my good days, but I also have my bad days, and that's when I do these. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, it uh, looks like you draw your inspiration from nature. I do. From, it looks and like you do dreams. a lot of animals and dreams. Yeah, Does I'll wake that... up in the middle of the night and I'll scribble something down on my notepad next to my bed, get up in the morning and be surprised. How long does it take to produce a stained glass panel like what we see here? This one right here is 50 hours. I just finished it Thursday night, and I already had the hair in bevel, so that's how long it takes. It's very labor intensive. Do you get, um, are these for people to mostly hang in a window? Anywhere but on a wall is my... Anywhere but on yes. a wall where the, it yes. needs the light to come you through. You want some light to come through. Now you can hang it like if you have a half wall into a foyer or a half wall in a bathroom or a cut through between a kitchen and a dining room. Hang it there. You can put it in front door, side lights, transom, anywhere but directly on a wall. You come here every year, don't you? I do. Of course, we've missed a couple years now. Right. Well, last year was the pandemic, and the year before we had Hurricane Dorian come through. Yes, yes. Well, thanks for talking. Sure thing. I really come think and see you, us at Honeyhorn. I think you Hilton do some Head. beautiful. When, when is that now? That's in April 24th, I think, that weekend. Okay. And it's put on by Coastal Discovery Museum, and it's a real nice show. Well, thank you very much for that. Thank you. And this is HK Steel Art. That stands for Haley King. She's from right here in Bluffton, South Carolina. And this is Haley, the artist. Haley, how long does it take to produce one of these pieces? So I do everything in stages. So I get big sheets of steel, draw everything out, and cut everything out, and do all my grinding and torching. So it's a whole process. So I couldn't tell you exactly how long. A long time? A long time. <laughs> well, how did you get started in this? Uh, my father taught me. He has a shop and he builds equipment for a living and he taught me how to weld and plasma cut. And you sell from different galleries here in Bluffton, don't I you? I do, I do. I sell in Bluffton General, Al Harry Furniture, um, Graco on Hilton Head. Are most of these wall hangings? Most of them are. I have a lot of standing pieces, but yesterday was really busy, so I got wiped out. Standing pieces like the flag? And yes, the, like these two that are standing. And the... Um, the seahorse. Kind of like sculptures. Yeah. But uh, they're not so much sculpted as they are, I guess, cut. And flat Stanleys, if you I'm will. sorry? Like flat Stanleys. Flat Stanleys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain that? Um, flat Stanley is a thing I learned in school. It's a flat paper little guy, and you take him around different places and take pictures of him. Okay, so. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, of course. En enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And this is Kelly Jacobs. She's from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, which is up near Charleston, by the way. Hi, Kelly. How are you today? Doing well. How are you today? These are pastels, aren't they? They are. And you know, these are different than a lot of the pastels that I see. They have a combination of real high realism, but with um, uh, a lot more color than we might see by the eye. Have, have you have you have you intentionally done that to create the impression that you want to give? Right. Um, actually, I love working in the pastels, and with that medium, you can actually achieve that. Um, I love the Low Country. We have so much inspiration here in Bluffton and Charleston area, and um, yeah, it just sort of gives it a magical quality that you don't normally get. Well, that's what I'm regions. seeing. I'm seeing in your pictures some really beautiful colors that are irresistible that we might only see on the best day. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, do you do en plein air painting? I do. I do. I work a lot outside. So as you don't well. do just from photographs. No, a lot of times I will actually go out and take photographs while I'm actually um, painting. So then when I come back in my studio, I can sort of use that photograph as a reference. And then I come back and uh, I complete the piece. And the marsh the marsh seems to be your primary subject. Yeah. And that just changes color throughout the day, doesn't it, as the sun comes across? It and does, and actually throughout the year, too, as well. Because um, we have the, the fall, you get this beautiful sort of yellow tones. And then... Um, Throughout the day, you've got different changes in light, and just, just, yeah, I just love it. It's really just, yeah. How long does it take to paint one of your medium-sized pictures? Uh, it's anywhere from a couple of weeks to maybe a month. 
And these are all one of a kind, are they? They are. They're all, all original. originals. They're That's all originals. amazing. I'll tell you, this is about the best I've seen anyway. This is really world class. I definitely appreciate it. So I really, that too. I really appreciate your talking. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I like better, that. Better. Well, meet Amos Hummel, Hilton Head Island artist, longtime Hilton Head artist. And Amos, what can you tell us about the kind of happy, colorful, cheerful art that you put out? Well, lesson number one is if you can't if you can't dazzle them with brilliance, blind them with color. So I started there, and then of course the Low Country scenes and our fish, and it's been success ever since. And this creation is by Bob Stern of Ohio. And this is his booth. Bob, what, uh, what would you like to tell people about what, you're, uh, what you do? Well, these are all created from upcycled antiques that are 100 to 150 years old. They're all one of a kind. And uh, they're just wonderful, whimsical works of art. Like I don't this. think there's anybody else doing no, something like I've this. Been doing, Not in this I've been show, doing anyway. this work for 27 years. I go all over the, we go all over the country. And I've just uh, completed uh, piece number 3,314. But really, in all these years, nobody's knocked us off. Because, hey, you have to go and buy all these antique parts before you even start doing it. And then it's a lot of work to do it on top of it. This is an old antique standing desk. Very rare. I've never seen one of these. Very cool that I made into a person it is whose name cool. is Daisy, or Smile says her name. Those are old antique typewriter keys. So what kind of, uh, what makes, what inspires you to make... I don't know, so I'm just things. insane, that's all. <laughs> and then, then I do a feather on the second hand because time flies. This is an old antique toaster from 1915. Great old uh, uh, Eastman Kodak camera. This one's dated 1921, November 21st, 1921. And then Greek Father Time, they all have names. This is the oldest piece right here. This is circa 1850. Original Lansonia Brass Company clock, very old, from Connecticut. Everything seems unique, uh, right. different, because yeah. every piece of uh, antique that you're working with is unique, isn't it? Yeah, Ma Bell, she's great. Ma so Bell. Great. Is Mr. Bell in the show, too? Or did you yeah, always... I sold him. You sold him, okay, yes. I'm not surprised. Well, thank you. You're uh, really welcome. I uh, really enjoy uh, talking to you, and uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you. And this is Julian Paul Latos from Lenore, North Carolina. Thank you. And this is Paul. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. So you make everything yourself, obviously. I make the wheel thrown pieces here. The wheel you know, thrown. If, it, if it's round, I did it. If it has the free form water splash bowls, uh, my wife does those. Julie would have to explain her pieces. Okay. Okay. So these are Julie's. These are Julie's. Hers are the water splash bowls. Mine are the wheel throw pieces. The wheel throw. Yeah. Okay. So well, Julie, is, what's your inspiration? A water droplet. A water droplet. Yes. Yeah, so when water hits water, when a drop of water splashes down, a splash will be formed. And that was my inspiration. And do you uh, do that from your imagination or from a picture? Imagination. Imagination. It's all hand sculpted. And are these intended as just art pieces or are they functional serving dishes? or? They are art pieces, but it's the same, you know, clay or glaze as your... Um, Sorry, your plates at home, so you sure. can use them. They're dishwasher safe, microwavable, and oven proof. Really beautiful. Very different. Yeah. I haven't seen anything quite like it. Now, Paul developed this glaze, and it's our moonscape, and as you can see, it does shine in the sunlight. Moonscape? Yes, so it's the craters of the moon, and on the inside is stardust. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. I'm not sure either, but I think, I think so. This one is the stardust inside. One of the hand thrown or. Now this is pottery wheel. Pottery wheel. And has the moonscape on this side. 
And this is his lava glaze. It has a lot of metal in it. So it ebbs and flows. Very different. Yes. Very different. Unique. Everyone's one of a kind, isn't it? It is. Everyone's one of a kind. Now, is this your first show here in Bluffton? First show yeah. in Bluffton. Yeah. How's it been going? Excellent. Excellent. Great, Very great. Good. We'll be back with the patches. You'll be back. I'm sure they will. <laughs> well, thanks for talking and Thank you. best of luck. Thank you. And the cottage is a real popular local restaurant here on Calhoun Street. <laughs> we kept bees and the bee inspector came around. He didn't wear anything. He didn't wear gloves or nothing. It was unbelievable. Spartina 449 is a company that started on Defusky Island. And this is Heather, the manager. Heather, tell us about Spartina. I know it started on Defusky Island and uh, selling uh, handbags, yeah, making handbags, right? Yeah, so right? what's unique about Spartina is we're all about the low country, and you're gonna find a little taste of low country in every piece that we have. From our little mermaid emblem that we have that is related back to how the sailors used to drink on the island and think they saw mermaids. And then what's really unique about us is our prints all tell a story, and right now our fall prints are all about Savannah and the history of Savannah. So we are just very unique in what we have because it's all related to low country. How many stores do you have now? There's 11. 11, 11 stores. stores. This is our Bluffton store here on Calhoun Street, and we are the flagship store. We've been around for about seven years, but everything started here with the stores. It's, this is where the magic happens. And people can come here every day of the year, right? Accepting holidays. Yeah, sure. I, think, I think they give us Christmas off. I think we get <laughs> Christmas off, but yeah, we're open. We're open on Saturdays. We're open during the market. Come down to downtown for the markets on Thursdays. We're open. We have our porch sales on Thursdays, but we have women's apparel, and we specialize in handbags. A little taste of linen and leather mixed together is what we uh, what we're known for. And inside the store, there's a lot more of the magic, like you yes, said. Yes, a lot more magic. We have wonderful mermaids that work inside, so come in so you can meet all of our mermaids. Okay, I'm sure people will. Yeah, thank and, you. And thanks very much for talking. Of course, thank you. And here's the booth for Rachel Newman from right here in Bluffton, South Carolina and observing passers-by come to this booth. I've heard a few wows and oohs and ahs for what she's doing here. So Rachel, these are all one-of-a-kind oil paintings, is that right? They're oil. They're oil paintings and acrylic paintings. And acrylic. This one is 100% oil. Mm -hmm. This one is actually a reproduction of a, an acrylic painting. So this, this, isn't, um, this is not the original, this is a, a f um, fine art reproduction. But I paint with, with uh, oil paints, and then if you come over to this side, you can see that I paint with palette knife work and acrylic paint to start my foundation. And then from there, I add layer upon layer upon layer of, of, of oil paint on the top or acrylic paint, depending on ongoing. So these that you're next to right now seem to merge the sky and the sea. I do. But it seems that in some of them you are more interested in the sky than the sea. I am, yeah. And when a boat is there, it's always very small. Why is that? Um, I, one of the things that I want to capture in my paintings is the aspect of solitude. And so when, um, when we... It, the smaller boats allow people to kind of become immersed in the paintings. So if you come around to the other side here, oh, okay, you can get a really good um, impression of that. So here, you can kind of drift, drift into the painting. Where here, this one is just—it's soft, and people think about what's behind the mist and the fog. And so, when I'm painting something like this, which is an oil painting. I'm always looking for what do you, as the viewer, think about what's behind here. It's kind of dreamy. People tell me stories about what they see behind there, what that means to them. Kind of abstract. It's, it's somewhat abstract. It's definitely... But it's clearly water. It's water. And, and the, sky. And the name of that painting is, in fact, water. And I do a lot with, you know, obscure horizon lines like some of them. Uh, there was one that we, we looked at first. It had a, a full horizon line. So there's obscure horizon lines, no horizon line, a solid horizon line, boats, no boats, 
you know, or things like that. And they're all, but they're all intended to draw people in, you know, kind of to get a little bit of relief from very restful. the day-to-day -day world. Very restful, right. very soothing right. and colorful. You're welcome. Congratulations. So I really like the, the red, the red in the boats. Um, I frequently paint red boats or white boats. I like to do contrasting colors. So actually behind that red boat is the complementary color of green, which I did as a wash underneath it. So I do many layers so that you get the depth because with this type of minimalism, you have to have many layers in order to really be able to to float into the painting, so to speak. You, you have the kind of paintings that could hang, I think, yeah. most in every, every house, whether it's traditional or contemporary. It's true. And the colors look like they're very popular. They're, they're well, we live in, we live in the low country, and I, you know, I live here. I do, I do um, art shows all over the country, and everybody sees their own body of water in mm -hmm. them. So with the Great Lakes, they see the Great Lakes if it's, you know, Interesting. In someplace in the Midwest, it's whatever the large body of water or a memory of a vacation or something like that. Um, I really enjoy people being able to put their own, see what they see in the paintings. Now, did I see that you also do jaclays or do you do any kind of posters or something more economical for for some people? I do. Let's go back over to the other side here. All right. This this is a jaclé. And so the, a jaclé is a, a, the word jaclé is a French word that means to spray. And they're referring to the millions of droplets of ink that are used to replicate the original. So I take the original painting, yeah. which looks almost identical to this except for there was texture on the boat. And I bring it to a museum quality photographer or scanning co you know, company that scans it. They take a very large, um, they, they take a really high quality photograph of it and then they produce a digital image which is then uh, color corrected to their printing equipment. And so they do a proof and then I come and approve the proof. Sometimes it's very simple, sometimes it takes hours and hours and 30 or 40 or more proofs. This one really and truly looks like the original because there's not a lot of texture to it, but um, it's just a really nice way. Once the original has found its forever home, it allows the, the painting to continue on. It allows you to get a different price point and to also change the sizes. Well, it's real pretty. And yeah. thanks very much for talking. You're so I'm welcome. So here are Gullah Sweetgrass Basket Creations from Michael and Dino, the Gullah Elders, that's G-U-L-L-A-H. Dino's on the left, Michael's on the right. These sweet basket creations have become more popular year after year and they're very work intensive. Take a lot of time to create Dino. How long does it take to make a typical basket? The average piece takes from three to four days. Three to four days. And we work for six to eight hours a day. Six to eight hours a day. Yes, sir. Well, they've got awesome. some. You've got some beautiful ones here. Yes, sir. You're welcome. So you, we see you in the fifth right now. Um, so maybe next year you might see some. And on Calhoun and Church Street, on the corner here is the home of Soba Society of Bluffton Artists for the festival there out on the sidewalk. <laughs> and this is Jody Rankin's booth from Dawsonville, Georgia. So Jody, these are acrylics. What can you tell us about them? Yeah, th these are a new series that started doing large scale canvas on the gallery wrap. Um, of course, my, my technique, I use a lot of water and brushing to create the backgrounds, but these are my ornate rays here. And I have a striped marlin piece here, and you see some of the, some of them I add a little dust in metallics to get a little flicker if you have it in the light. I'm originally from here, up in Charleston, Allendale area. I see. Um, just did a slight relocation, hope to be back this way. These are awfully big. Do you uh, find people are more interested in the small, medium, or large products? It's a mix. Uh, you know, you find people that have, nowadays you have vaulted ceilings and big open areas where they have wall space for something like this. So they need um, a big piece. And, and they'd rather have a large piece than a match of smaller pieces, so it works out well. And 
I, I love creating big things. So. And so these are fish rubbings. Yeah, this is my other and the same with the uh, series I work with, which are original fish rubbings. Can you uh, can you tell the viewer what is a fish rubbing? Yeah, well, you actually take almost an impression, or you do take an impression from a real fish. Um, there's some technique involved, um, but uh, you can use either a cotton swab or your hand. And the ideal is to paint the fish, um, and then you use it as a reverse canvas. You lay your paper or pulp on top of it. Um, and then slightly press the uh, paper pulp onto the fish and a light touch and you press into the scales. Um, these three, for instance, have very small scale impressions, but um, species like this, like the striped bass, you're pressing backwards into the scales and you get the patterns of them. Um, and you get the fin impressions. And of course, anything, you see eyes, circular, we put those in afterwards because it's during the light touch, they kind of blend in with the other colors. So how's business? It's good, good. It's always great. Great weekend in Bluffton. This I know you've been here many times before. Yeah, I think this is our seventh year. Seventh so, year, people. So. People must like your yeah, they, art. Yeah, yeah, we've we've had uh, we're very appreciative of everybody in Bluffton and our collectors. So we try to change it up a little bit every year, always new stuff. God, are you a cutie patootie? Hi, baby. Oh, three months. Oh my gosh, what a cutie patootie! I love it. Hi, baby. So this is the art of Alice Ann Dobbin from Charleston, South Carolina, and here is the artist. Alice Ann, how are you today? Oh, doing very well, thank you. Let me ask you, are these, are these oils? Yes, they are. They're all oils? They're all oils on canvas. All oils on canvas. And you have some very large pieces and also some rather small pieces that would go just about anywhere. Yes, they do. And they have bright colors. Well, what I try to create is a sense of peace and warmth. Mm -hmm. And the colors add to that. And uh, some of them are very textural because I use a combination of brushwork and palette knife. And do you paint from plain air or do you paint from photographs or both? Both. Both, yeah. When you're painting the birds, you almost need to use a photograph. <laughs> you, you like, you like uh, the ocean, the beaches, oh, yes. boats, and birds. And I'm not sure if it's in that order or not, but um, no, very colorful. Passion. Birds are your passion. See you later. Make good decisions. I think that passion comes out in many of these paintings. Yeah. Now, Alice Ann, some of these colors, do you really see those in nature, or are you adding them to make kind of a surrealistic appearance of the sand or the sky? Both. 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 Sometimes, well, uh, sometimes you really do, see, when you're walking at night on the beach, you really do see purples and blues in the sand. As the sun's going and those down. colors will change as the sun moves, and right? And it does. It does. Darker and lighter. It does. And... But sometimes I have a tendency to push colors, as in the uh, palm trees. I just, I want something playful and whimsical. So I'll it, do that. Whimsical. Is it fair to say that sometimes the imagination is even better than uh, the reality, I guess you could say? Sometimes. Sometimes? sometimes. But you got to be, be based in nature. You have to be based in nature and you have to have the abil ability and the experience to make it happen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great. Experience is really important. It takes time to become an artist, doesn't it? Well, I've been doing this for about 35 years. 35 years. Actually, I've been painting all my life. And uh, uh, professionally, 35 years. 35 years. But birds are your passion. Yes, I love birds. Well, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you very much. And here is Gerardo from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina with mixed media. And here is the artist, Gerardo. Hello, how are you? Hey, great. Uh, what's your inspiration for all these pieces? It's about traveling all these places and making a story about each location. Making interiors, some of the exteriors, and how they look. And mixed media, it looks like they have dimension to them. Yes, they have texture, dimensions, they have bold colors, and the photography is all mine, so it makes them very interesting. It's like a picture within a picture. It's a room with a view. Or maybe two and three pictures within a picture. Well, there's some other ones, yes. Uh, yeah. 
How long does it take to make a picture like about a week? What, about a week yeah. to put one together. Yeah. Very fun. cheerful. That's the fun part. They're very cheerful. Thank you. And a lot of people connect because they've been to those places also. They see the place that reminds them of where they've been. Yep. They want to take it with them. Yes. Uh, every every one is an original, I take it. Yes. You don't have yes, any yeah. like copies of or I posters of. I only made of? one of Charleston because that's where I live in Charleston and for this little festival. And I made 50 prints of that. That's it. 50. Is this your first festival here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How's it going? Good. No complaints. I love this beautiful town. And this is the booth for Robert Rommel, photographer. And this is Robert. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Great. You're from right here in Bluffton, aren't you? Yes, I have a local gallery. We're located in the Promenade in Old Town, Bluffton. Let me just scan around here and take a look at some of these. Maybe you could tell us a thing or two about them. Yeah, these are triptychs when they're printed in three pieces like this. Um, it kind of gives a, a more graphic feel to the images. It looks like those could be sold individually, but are they all sold together always? The triptychs are as a single piece. Um, you can, you don't need to have it printed as a triptych, you can have it printed as, as a single canvas. A lot of these are pretty clearly uh, low country South Carolina roadways or, yeah, or scenes. Uh, these landscapes um, are either all from the low country or, or the same sorts of things you would see in the low country. Um, different islands, different beaches. These are photographs. Photographs, excuse me. Yeah, they're me. printed onto canvas or metal or paper, or the three mediums. But you know, they look like paintings, but they're photographs. Yeah, my style is very painterly, plus the canvas has a, a soft, gentle look to it as well. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you. And also, the festival features lots of food. about real estate in the area or anything at all please call me or email my phone number is 843-684-2933 my email address rich at gogated.com and my website is gogated.com so if you like the video well there are more at the gogated channel on YouTube so please subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you here.
sometime soon. <laughs>